Hey everyone, it's time for the review. This is the 2000 kilometers ultimate review of the Lipperkim Lynx. It took me quite a while to gather everything together because I don't like to break up my reviews into small parts. Before we start, I would like to say something, a short disclaimer. As you all probably know, I dropped my links from a literal mountain. I had a very bad accident and well, it happened, there is a video on the channel, but this is not about it. I would like to say thank you to all of those amazing people, my family, my friends and the community who supported me and helped me and without whom this review wouldn't be possible. Thank you so much and let's continue. So this is a huge review covering everything that you might or might not need about the wheel. If you're considering buying this wheel, then a spoiler alert, do that. It's an amazing wheel. The Lynx is definitely the main electric unicycle of 2024, but even if you already made a decision, I'd recommend to watch this video because you will probably find some information that you will not find anywhere else. Also another quick note, this is a review from a perspective of a heavy rider, which might be useful as well. As many people ask will that or another will be fine for them or not. My current weight is slightly shy of 120 kilograms, which is 260 pounds, and I'm also quite tall, so it adds another layer to this review because your stats most likely will be better or at least on par with mine which is definitely great and will answer to many questions. Okay, so let's do it step by step. We'll start with the first impressions, covering uh, a few weeks of me getting used to the wheel and trying new things, then we will talk about everything in detail. And the first impression is a very important thing, because you will see from the first row seat how some sentiments about the wheel change over time, and it will give you an extra layer of depth of understanding about this wheel. So, without further ado, let's start. Uh, this is going to be the very first time I'm trying to mount on this wheel outside and I have a very convenient and sloppy driveway going up here. Alright, let's give it a ride. And in comparison with uh, with the V13, it's kind of very easy to mount on this thing. Oh yeah, that's good. I feel a little bit of wobbles right away, probably because of my uh, pad placement or maybe because of the tire pressure, but it's kind of, you know, I feel it. Similar to what I got first time, on the V13, so probably I, I gotta give it a little bit more time to get used to the wheel, which makes sense for sure. Okay, I quickly tried to readjust the pads. Now it's a little bit better. I made a decision to go uh, to the Knox Mountain. I'll just go slower than usual, but I love the wheel. This is why I just want to ride it a little bit more. So I'm not quite sure if you see it, but I'm going over there. I'm going on the gravel. So uh, oh. Later in the video I will talk about pet's placement, but the life hack is simple, use a quality velcro. So yeah, this is the end of the day too. All great. I'm going to the mountains, it's going to be the full ride today. Gravel, mountains, bike trails, all that stuff, I'll try some uphills and test them and we'll see how it goes, should be fun.
pretty heavy guy and for me it's kind of really unusual to have something that drags my weight so easily up the wheel is very torquey and it doesn't feel that uphill like an uphill it drags you up very easily and it feels like you are riding on a flat land it's kind of it's kind of crazy so the next destination is a poltum and it's a gravel regular hiking trail so i want to take a look how it holds up against the gravel and also it has some uphills downhills and they're a little bit more steep than a regular road uphills yeah let's test it out Yeah, seriously, it was not difficult. I feel that this tire, this wheel, and how it balances up and handles is much better if you compare it with the V13 and even with the original Sherman, which was really well balanced. Probably I would say that the pedals should be a little bit lower, but it really depends if you want to go off-road, like off-road, off-road or not. You can do that, but it's not necessary. The wheel is beautiful. Beside my back is an uphill and I want to test it out because my V13 was struggling to start from here and go up there carrying my 265 pounds, I think. Anyway, so yeah, it was really uh, difficult for the wheel to start even. Uh, but then it did it with no any problems. I expect that Lynx will do it with no any issues as well, but I gotta test it. And this was the first wheel that hasn't struggled a bit under my weight. You can hear that the motor is working pretty hard, but at the same time it is not struggling. I just didn't feel it at all. I managed to go down with no any issues I could break at any time. It is freaking amazing. I love it. This is incredible. It's very, 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 very torquey. It is even more incredible than I just said in another video like that when I was sitting at the lake. It is crazy. It just doesn't feel uphill at all, but it's a good feeling. And it feels like it's a good wheel for every purpose. It's good for trails, it's good for streets, it's good for off-roading, and it's good for chilling, right? It's very maneuverable, it's very controllable, it's very predictable. I'm, I'm highly impressed by the qualities of this wheel. You can easily go around people, or you can take over cars, or you can uh, go on trails and on gravel roads. There is no difference, it eats at all. Also, I'm quite impressed about the range because all my tests show that it has more range than the V13, which has 3000 watt hour battery, and this one is 2700 watt hour battery, and it has more range, about 10 to 15 percent at the end of the day, and it's kind of it's kind of weird. Also, it feels very lightweight when you ride on the trails or when you need to uh, eventually lift it up or something like that. It is great. It feels great. It, it feels light in comparison with the V13, which is uh, just 10 kilograms heavier, like 20 pounds heavier, but those 20 pounds make a huge difference. This wheel is just another league. This wheel basically beats it in every category besides the build quality. This wheel is kind of close, but it has problems. It has some issues that I will show you a little bit later. They are not critical by any means, but they still kind of show you the flows that you can expect from the wheels from a younger company. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It's absolutely beautiful weather today, and today I'm going to see Don, and it happens that Don also bought Lynx like a couple of weeks after I did. So I'll ask him what he thinks about the wheel, and instead of one first opinions you'll have two first opinions okay let's go uh there is a first bump down this road where the car is right now let's test it i'm going about eh, like 35 no 45 dollars an hour yeah no problem at all this doesn't feel like anything the car is a bit slow come on really cars yeah fine Hey, Dal. Hey, man. 
your first impressions? Oh, I really like it. It's a lot of fun. Only 140 kilometers on it. I've been mostly just kind of doing some errands and stuff with it. Uh, uh spending some time just to kind of get used to the balance of it because, you know, I want to be be safe on it and stuff. Yeah, I noticed that it wobbles a little bit, although coming from the S22, mm. it's like the same kind of size and weight platform, and yeah. you know, even the pedal height's almost identical, so it was a pretty easy transition for me, other than I, I'm noticing some wobbles, so I'm trying to just sort of figure out where that balance exactly is and just acclimate to it. And the cornering, I'm getting a little bit better at the cornering, I'm kind of figuring out how I have to stabilize my leg against the side of the... the the yeah. device, which I had to do with the S22 as well, but uh, the wobbles in the corners, yeah, I'm still trying to sort that out. Mm. Although I think once I get my pads and stuff, everything for this and set it up, it'll probably be a little bit different. Oh no. Oh, you got lucky. Yeah, it's a little bit slippery out here. What, did you catch a rock or something over there? It just sort of turned you over or what? No, it's slippery, so it went sideways. I decided to go. That was fun, not gonna lie. I will to try one more time. Oh, I feel there's no problem. Okay, well, let's go. Slow. You know, it's, just, it's pretty effortless. Going uphill, uh, downhill is a little bit tricky because it's still wet. No. Well, I'll try it. It's, it's kind of it's kind of easy, man. All right, I'm not coming back down though. Yeah, yeah fair enough. <laughs> now he feels it. Yeah, just push it, man. Here you go. Well. Seriously, dude? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not a problem at all. I mean, if I fall, there is a problem, but I shouldn't. Seriously. Wow. Crazy. That's nuts. That was easy. Yeah, I'll go another way around because I'm not going to. Yeah, I understand. The Lynx feels like they took almost everything that makes a great electric king cycle and cranked it up to 11. The first thing that you feel when you start riding is the power, is the torque specifically. It feels so powerful, so instant, it's crazy. The Emotion V13 was the most important wheel of 2023, mainly for pushing its safety, boundaries, performance and overall quality up to the point where it becomes a good product. And now the Lynx is stepping up as the most important wheel of 2024. And there is a great reason for that. So let's break it down piece by piece. Uh, we're gonna talk about every aspect of it, the good, the bad, and oh, everything in between. The first is the weight. It weighs 88 pounds and considering the size of the battery, it's not too heavy. And when you're riding, it doesn't feel that way. Despite its weight, it feels much lighter when you are riding. Liberkim used magnesium alloy as a main material and you can really feel that difference, especially when you're riding. And when you're lifting up, it actually... Let's try to lift it up. It's pretty easy actually. Not too bad. What I like to do is to lift it up this way because it provides some extra leverage from the bottom with this stand and it's a little bit easier to to lift the wheel if you need to put it in the trunk of your car or something. Size-wise we are looking at 42 inch tall wheel uh, and for my height it's perfect and honestly I think it will fit even bigger guys and I haven't seen any complaints from smaller people as well so yeah size wise it should be great also it looks aggressive which fits that kind of look of a bigger wheel so it's not goofy it looks pretty much as a performance wheel and I like that and talking about the visual design, I think it is funny how EUC designs changed over time. We, we've seen Kingsong 14D, 18L, then Nikola, Gatway wheels like MSP, MSX. 
then uh, Warren Sherman looked completely different, more square-like shaped box and now we have the links and that's quite interesting evolution of design. Okay, another thing worth mentioning is the motor rim. If you've been around ACs for a while, you remember the old Sherman rims breaking issues. The links definitely address that the rim looks a lot tougher and honestly I don't think that somebody who is doing any casual riding or even casual jumps would break that. It's still possible though, because physics is a bit The rim is broken, here a huge chunk of the rim is just completely off the table interestingly enough. The second part of the wheel is completely fine, I checked it all around and it's fine. But I managed to do that only by dropping the wheel from a mountain. Or you can do like that guy. So either or, it is possible, but it is very difficult. Okay, now let's talk about the external components. The front light is capable of 2500 lumens with 20 watt of power. That's pretty bright and it's adjustable too, uh, which is pretty handy so you won't blind any pedestrians or people riding uh, to you, which is great again. Safety. Well, it's getting dark. It's obviously not a late night or anything like that, but well, this thing helps for sure. So it is pretty bright and I see the road. And this is the main point of this light. The rear light is solid and pretty visible, no complaints here. It's got braking and turning signals like all modern lights nowadays. This is the most important thing uh, that you are visible on the road when it's dark. And it is good being visible. Now it's a bit of an interesting thing here, the power pads. Or should I say the lack of them? The long story short, there has been some drama between Bigodi and Lipperkim over some patents. Including super secret patents for power pads for whatever reason. So now some dealers include them, while some others don't. And talking about power pads, buying my will from EVs, I got these power pads, which I wouldn't even call power pads because there is no power in such a thing. It is dangerous to ride with things like that. E-wheels, at the other hand, send me power pads looking like this. Well, this is just a part of it, but you get the idea. So it's pretty good, nice quality and stuff. And I ride with this and I don't see why I wouldn't because they're just fine. However, selling performance wheels without power pads is a bit of a mess in my opinion. It's like selling a Lambo without a brake pedal. Something like that, isn't it? That has doors that open like this, not like this, or like this. Personally, I printed my power pads on a 3D printer and I'm a huge fan of consumer 3D printing and I highly recommend to buy a 3D printer instead of buying accessories. It will be much cheaper over time and besides it being just a nice hobby, it will provide you some understanding and depth on how these things are being made. But well, you do you. This is just an advice. Another little issue with the power pads is the side panels are a little bit tricky for power pads placement. There is not a lot of space to put them on and the handles are not flush with the surface of the wheel. So it's a little bit of a complication to put them on in the correct position. I would recommend to use a better, more robust and thicker Velcro and hope that the manufacturer will fix it over time because well, it sucks. Also, it is funny because my accident with the links triggered a lot of questions like what kind of Velcro are you using? Okay, th this is just a Velcro brand, just industrial strength, something like, like this. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, I dropped my wheel and the power pads didn't came off and it shows a lot about the strength of this thing. And I think those power pads just protect my wheel from uh, from a worse damage. I hope this information is useful. And if you're looking for a good Velcro, here you go. I mean, I'm not selling, but I guess I am. Handlebars are okay, they are robust. But I gotta say, I prefer the B13's handlebars with those M6 screw holes. 
those were pretty sweet and allowed you to use different accessories on your wheel. I really hope that other manufacturers will be using that design a little bit more because it was simply brilliant. I loved it a lot and it was very utilitarian, which I always like. As handlebars, they were much better than anything right now and I miss them. The Lynx handlebars are just fine, but they could be much better. By the way, from the perspective of the drop and the damage that these handlebars have taken, I think they are pretty robust. Uh, they could be designed better, but it's arguable and I don't think that any other solution on the market would protect my wheel from such a fall. So I don't know. I think these handlebars are fine could be better but i don't think that there is anything better on the market in terms of protection but in terms of utility i like the v13 bars a little bit more handle bars are fine for lifting the wheel also i like to use the stand for this matter because it's very very solid and gives you that necessary leverage and it's a little bit easier to lift the wheel so yeah it's a good stuff the pedals are in a good spot. They are 10 inch foot plates. At first I thought they, they needed to be lower. I even commented on it. But after riding for a while, I find it completely fine. The pedal height is fantastic to be honest. I, I really like it. Uh, for the spikes, I prefer this type of spikes, which are not something extreme, locking you on the wheel and not allowing you to jump off when it's necessary. I prefer to be able to move my feet, but it's a personal matter and many people change foot plates to third party and well, I don't. I like these ones. Talking about pedals, I need to mention about wobbles. Many people reported about them and some even crashed. Any wobbles you might feel at the start will go away after about 500 miles or so. I think the main reason for wobbles is the actual tire. While I love the tire, it should be a little bit worn in to get rid of wobbles. Although even considering that the tire might wobble at the start, I think it's one of the best Nobby tires I've ever tried. The grip is incredible. For all types of terrains, off-roading or on-roading, it doesn't matter. It's lovely, but it still has that specific quirk that I mentioned. I would like quickly to correct myself about the wobbles with the links. After I tested for a while the Veteran Sherman L, which is a way better balanced wheel than the Lynx, I think that it is somewhat top-heavy. You don't feel it when you ride it. It feels very natural, it feels stable, but it is easier to cause wobbles with the links for some reason. And it adds up to the tire thing and to the power pads placement that I mentioned before. So be careful about it. It's not bad, it's not a wobbly wheel, but it can wobble in certain conditions. So be careful. Yeah, I started noticing the tire profile flattening out at around 3,500 which uh, started becoming a little bit harder to control and handle. So I did want to run like the stock tire to see what it was like on this thing because it does give me the versatility to go around grass and, you know, off-roading and on the streets, but I'm definitely going to be rocking a street tire and give that a go next. The stand is great for lifting the wheel, but pretty useless when you are charging at home and you were to park the wheel. Because the charger port is at the rear and the stand is at the rear and the angle is going to be very weird if you try to put that cable into the charging port this way. Uh, the charging port is uh, at the rear of the wheel and it's really kind of, well, it is fine somewhat, but it is uncomfortable to get there and reach uh, for the charging port or also the uh, the gasket is sitting there pretty tight and sometimes it's a little bit uncomfortable to hard to close it too yeah so hard to close it hard to open it then have to straighten it out and then hope and push it in and another thing if you put your wheel on the stand it's kind of becoming a really bad idea to reach to the charging port because the angle is so bad so you need to sort of muscle you know, memory yeah, put put the wheel straight, put the charger in, and uh, then on the stand again. The cover is fine though. It's rubber, which is great. Not the best cover though. I would say I would prefer something on top of the wheel, maybe. So overall, it's built pretty good, and it has some quirks, uh, but overall, it's pretty solid. Now let's talk about roll numbers. 
The free spin rate is 105 km per hour for the high torque and 125 km per hour for the high speed mode, which is pretty insane and allows you to ride up to 80 and over 90 km respectively. Talking about mods, some people are swapping in Sherman S's motors instead of the original motors. And this way you lose in torque, but you can achieve insane speeds. I don't think that you should do that, but it's pretty wild what people are achieving. Free spin is around 160 km per hour, and there are some videos where people are riding over 115 km an hour, which is definitely not recommended, but you do you. I didn't tell you that. If we talk about the original high speed and high torque mode, they are pretty close in my opinion. So uh, the high torque feels a little bit torquier at lower speeds, but it's so minimal that probably majority of riders wouldn't even care. So personally, I am riding with a high speed mode because it is as torquey as a high torque mode for any circumstances that you can get into that it doesn't really matter, but it provides you that speed gap about 10 kilometers on top, which is a safety margin. And I think it's more important than uh, a low amount of torque that you would get at a very low speed. But I would suggest you to try and decide it for yourself because again, it's your safety, meaning your decision. Both modes are pretty darn fun. Battery wise, we are looking at 151.2 volt, 2700 watt hour Samsung 50S pack. Also it comes with 50E batteries, but I would simply recommend you getting the version with 50S cells as if proven to be reliable performance cells with no any issues, at least so far. Oh no, it's not too bad. It's impressive. It is. It's got a smart BMS that keeps an eye on cell voltage and temperature, which is again great. It means it's safe and it means that you will know if anything happens with your battery, which is great. Again, just check the app. It'll be fine. You'll be fine. Everything will be fine. This wheel can charge at 15 amp, which is pretty quick, but not as quick as uh, some existing competition. So these guys are going to be much quicker. While we're talking about the battery, I need to mention that the OEM charger had some issues and I made a whole video about how to fix them, which is in the description down below. And I highly recommend to check it if you want to fix the hardware part. Also, there is a software fix from Liberkim, which was shipped soon after that. And also you can use uh, third party solutions such as smart chargers or Pizum charger enhancer and things like that. And the link on that video is in the description as well. Me? Well, I fixed my charger and I'm good. Another thing to mention is that the original charger is not exactly quiet. Actually, it's pretty loud and well, it's making weird sounds uh, when it's done, which is normal, but some people get scared. Okay, so this is supposedly completely fine. And this happens when the BMS is trying to balance your cells and the charger, and it's kind of talking to the charger and the charger is doing this weird stuff. But I mean, everyone says it's normal, so I'm saying it's normal too. At least nobody complained about this behavior and it's charging up to 100% or whatever you set every time. No issues. So this weird stuff is normal. Not a deal breaker, but something to be aware of, uh, especially if you live in a small apartment and you don't have a garage, workshop or something like that, because it quickly becomes very annoying. But again, just remember about it or buy another charger, which is possible too. It's 2024, chargers are everywhere. Now suspension. There are a lot of videos on the internet on how to set and service suspension on Liberkin wheels. So I'll talk about the experience itself. It's got 90 millimeters of travel using fast A suspension models. It is a progressive suspension spring for better or worse. And I believe for better because the idea is pretty simple. The more you compress them, the more force they push back with. It's meant to help preventing bottoming out even for heavy riders uh, such as myself on lighter springs. 
And the range that you can choose from is quite big, so you can either pick 62, 66 or 70 pound suspensions uh, from Liberkim. Uh, it's a good range, but uh, I can't imagine somebody genuinely needing anything over 66 pounds. I always my to 60 pounds of weight never buttoned out uh, my suspension on the links and uh, I bet you wouldn't. It's great, comfortable suspension, very smooth when you are riding and it compensates everything that you might might do by jumping off curbs or anything. And it's a little bit on the sporty side in comparison with the Sherman S suspension. So kind of very smooth, but at the same time, not. it doesn't feel like a couch. You know what I mean? Also, I must mention that sometimes you might hear a clunky sound on small bumps and curbs, which is coming from your suspension. But in fact, it's not coming from your suspension, but from the mudguard. So everything is fine here. The wheel comes with an Obitar, a 2.75 14 size, which is about 20 inch in outer diameter. When you order the links, you basically have two options, either the TNT tubeless tire or the Kenda K262 Nobby. And my personal choice is always a Nobby tire. Again, I know it's very personal, but I don't understand who choose a street tire over a Nobby tire if you are not specifically racing. It is grippier, smoother and safer because of that and works for most of situations. If you go to off-road, it can handle off-road. If you go on a regular road, definitely it will. So the only thing that I'd prefer for a Nobby tire is to have its tubeless variation. There is only one downside for this type of tire. When it's new, you might feel some wobbles, as I mentioned before. It takes some time to wear it in and settle, but once it does, the wobbles are pretty much done. They will disappear. But this is the thing that you need to keep in mind because, well, it's worth it. The grip on this thing is impressive. Whether you are on a pavement or you're hitting some off road trails, it doesn't matter. It holds up well. It's versatile, which is nice if you are like me and mix up your riding between city streets and rougher grounds like mountain bike trails and such. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this tire. You just need to keep in mind that it might wobble, so be careful. But besides that, it's a great tire. Now let's talk about the riding experience. And riding is where the Lynx really shines. It's different from anything else out there. There are basically two main ways you'll use your Lynx. Commuting on roads and hitting trails. Let's start with road riding. Come on, yeah, here we is the first you see to break the 151.2 volt barrier. It's not the highest barrier, but higher voltage means that it's more efficient, need less wiring and can speed faster. And boy, does it spin. The acceleration on this thing is crazy fast. There are some faster wheels already, but there are not too many wheels as quick as this one. It is one of the quickest wheels out there right now. The acceleration is sometimes so quick that you might overshoot turns if you're riding on a curvy road. So you need to be extra careful about it. And I'm not joking here. Braking is amazing. I'm riding in high speed mode and my friend Don is riding in high torque mode. He thinks that it brakes better in torque mode, but Honestly, I tried both and I can't tell much of a difference. Theoretically, he's right, because braking is about that momentum where you are borrowing extra power from the motor, which is about torque. So I don't know. Both modes are great for braking, I would say. Speed-wise, you can reach 90 km an hour with the high speed mode on or even more. So this is the high torque mode. Let's do that. 101, okay, let's change it to high speed now. And to change it, you need to go to... To here, press it once, 
High speed is on, let's wait a little bit. High speed mode is on. 124. It's kind of a weird that we are at the spot where the top speed is practically staying unchecked because it is so high these days that it's literally unsafe to check that extreme on a one wheel device. So people get close, but not too close. People tend not to cross that border where it cuts out, which is a good thing. You don't want to cut out at 100 km an hour. You always can check your PWM and while it's under 85%, you're fine. And when we talk about the roads, let's not forget about sidewalks and walkways, which are also technically roads, but made for pedestrians. It's okay, go, 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 go. <laughs> you go first. It's fine. Speaking of this, the Lynx is a very nimble electric unicycle that allows you to ride it at a very low speed when necessary and maneuver around people even if it's crowded. Now for off-road riding. It's equally good, if not better, for riding on trails. The torque on this thing is absolutely insane. It climbs like a mountain goat. You simply don't feel those inclines that you wanted to challenge you. It's a little bit tricky here, especially in these conditions, and also it is windy today, which makes it extra challenging, dangerous, whatever you pick. It also handles different terrains with ease it pretty well, I would say, because of the tire and the torque. The tire is very grippy, and the torque is just absolutely on another level. Okay. It's a drop here. And it goes up here. Oh my god. I'm lost, I'm lost, I'm lost. <sighs> the drop itself isn't the problem. The problem is going up. Oh, fuck. Still going up. Man. Incredible. Climber. Oh. Just got up here. I wanted to go down. Instead, I got on another top. All right, this thing just incredible on the trails. I got up here from down below. I have no words enough. I'm highly impressed by this thing, and it's a pretty light wheel with incredible torque that will get you to the places where you refused to go to before. It's incredible. Look at the view, by the way. Just, ah. There is one tip. I would recommend to keep your pedals at stock height for trails. It saved me a bunch of times and there is a lowering kit available online. And I would say that it doesn't make too much sense, in my opinion. Theoretically, it might add some stability, which is Again, arguable, but you will sacrifice the pedal height, so it literally depends either you need it or not. I wouldn't if I had anything not paved around my home, but you decide by yourself. Now it's time to talk about safety. First off, we got the whole sensor safety feature, and this is pretty cool. Even if the sensor fails, the wheel should stop safely. In fact, it will slow down to 5 km an hour, which is usually enough to jump off. In the upcoming Sherman L, they even announced that you can ride without any sensor at all, but the downside is that you will lose significantly in torque. So it will deliver you home safely, so I would say it's worth it. Also, the link officially is rated IP55. What does it mean? Well, it's water resistant, not waterproof. It can handle low pressure water spray from any angle. So riding through the light rain, well, yeah, possibly you'll be fine. Fording a river, maybe not so much, but it is handy. I sometimes, for example, just spray my wheel with a hose to quickly clean it up. And that's quite nice. I already mentioned Smart BMS previously, and yeah, it has that. It monitors self voltage, temperature, all that good stuff. It's available in the app, and you can check every single battery cell. 
Okay, a couple of words about temperatures. I rode these wheels during a heat wave a few days back and I made a short video about it. Officially the motherboard can work normally with temperatures up to 80 Celsius and I easily got 60 Celsius while riding to the mountain top when uh, it was 35 Celsius outside. So pretty hot, not deadly hot, but really, really uncomfortable. Is it rideable? Yeah. Uh, is it ideal? No, not really. I still don't like high temperatures as they can damage your hardware and electronics. So you gotta keep an eye on it, because you definitely don't want to get your motherboard burned while you're riding it. I don't want to repeat myself here really, you can check my videos, the link is down there in the description. It is fun. Enjoy! The Lynx gives you a lot of tools to stay safe, but at the end of the day, it's how you use them that counts. So I filled that line and literally a week after I dropped my wheel from a freaking mountain. The lesson learned and the moral of this story is being overconfident is probably the worst thing that you can do. Always be cautious about people around you, surroundings and such. So you are careful about the way you're riding because we have just a one wheel device, which is limited in traction and it's a little bit more maneuverable than bikes for per se, but it's not as grippy as those bikes. So you gotta be careful about that. And also it's a one wheel device, which is relying on electronics a lot. And we always gotta remember about it. So anyway, be careful guys. Now some interesting stuff about the range. So here is the deal with the links. If you're really pushing it hard, you're looking at about 50 to maybe 60 kilometers of range. I mean, effective range. That's when you are going all out, not holding back, going literally crazy. Now for normal riding, and by normal I don't mean baby in it, but not going crazy either. I usually get between 70 to 90 kilometers an hour when it's about 26 to 30 Celsius outside. That's riding at speeds between 40 to 70 kilometers an hour. As far as I know, somebody managed to squeeze out 170 kilometers from this wheel by keeping a steady speed of 25 kilometers per hour. That's impressive, but nobody is purposely riding like that. I just came out from home with about 98% because I charged my wheel up to 149.5 or 0.6 volts, not to overcharge the wheel. So let's start. I'm not going too fast and I'm not going too slow. So it's kind of very casual riding for me. So yeah, as you can see, I'm riding on different roads. Uh, sometimes it's bike trails because, well, not because I cannot go on the road, but because I really like bike, well, that particular bike trail. But when I go on the road, I go about 60, 65 kilometers an hour. It really depends on uh, the conditions around. Sometimes a little bit faster, sometimes a little bit slower. a little bit of wobbles uh, on the track on the asphalt. <laughs> a couple of words about wobbles. Uh, you can lower the wobbles by lowering the pressure in your tire too. So if you are riding with uh, something over 35 PSI, I think it makes sense to lower it down to 30 or something like that. And it will definitely help. But at the same time, keep in mind that if you lower your PSI way too low, the more chances you have to get it flat. And I got a couple of flat tires on electric unicycles on my original Sherman. And uh, every time it is devastating. I didn't get wipe out just because of my pure luck. But besides that, it's kind of, you cannot control it. So keep it mindful and think about 
some good balance between of getting rid of wobbles because of your tire pressure and getting rid of that risk of getting a flat tire. Okay, I'm at the second spot and the sunset is beautiful. Check this out. Uh, so the darkness bot is saying that I have 69% of the battery uh, left, which is nice. And uh, I've done 48 point, oh, sorry, 44.8 kilometers, I'm almost 45 kilometers. And it is 138.1 volts. So what does it mean? Well, uh, it means basically that you will have probably around uh, 80 to 85 kilometers uh, from your wheel. Good fun, 80 kilometers, and the rest is going to be pretty miserable. But I mean, it is what it is. 80 kilometers isn't bad for a 2700 uh, watt hour battery. I would say it's pretty much great. Okay, it's time to go home. Uh, it's a little bit of sand, which is always a not great surprise. So I'm at my place and I got 28% of the battery left with 58.9 kilometers, almost 60 kilometers, a little bit shy of that. And the voltage is at 124 volts. So that's the result. To be fair, I was riding uh, back home uh, very fast. So probably I consumed much more energy than initially. But anyway, it is what it is. It's a, a real world range sort of probably you'll have another 10 percent uh, of your battery that you can ride without any issues but at 15 percent will start slowing you down pretty drastically i would say the lynx performs really really well down to about 20 to 25 percent of the battery and after that you will notice that it starts to slow down a little bit but here is a cool thing even if you hit 113 volts which is basically zero empty battery, the low battery mode will give you a little bit more juice. I once made it home at exactly 113 volts and the low battery mode let me ride at 30 km per hour when I was at 115 volts, while the regular mode wouldn't let me go more than 15 km an hour without beeping. So that's a nice feature that can save your butt once in a while and you should know about it. The Lynx comes with a decent display. It serves well, but I have mixed feelings about it. It shows all the necessary information when you ride the wheel, but at the same time I definitely prefer the screen of the Inmotion V13 much more. Sometimes it is unclear what certain settings are for and, well, you gotta remember them all, which isn't something that you would like to waste your memory on. However, to be fair, the screen isn't the most necessary feature of the wheel and it has never been. I usually ride with a voltage on my screen and the reason here is pretty simple. The voltage reflects the real condition of your battery. 113.4 volts is at zero and 151.2 is at 100%. And while you somewhere in between you can decide whether you should go faster or slower, how much range you have and so on and so forth. No matter what app you are using. Another important setting is the pedal hardness. You can adjust it from zero to 100. Me, 
I, I set it to 100%. It gives you the most responsive feel, but if you are new to EUCs uh, or you like a softer ride maybe, you might want to start lower down and work your way up again until you find that sweet spot where you really like how it rides. But it really depends on many factors such as your weight, your riding style, uh, the acceleration you prefer and things like that. So yeah, try it at zero, try it to set to 100 and find some something in between that serves you well. The calibration screen is a very important and very to use function of your wheels that nobody knows about until they need it. So sometimes you need to recalibrate your wheel if you notice that it starts behaving funny. This happened with my wheel and I didn't know what to do and I didn't know what is going on until I figured it out. So here take a look at that and how to use that. This is a Sherman L. I don't have my links for some obvious reasons, but recalibration process is pretty much the same across all Lipercam wheels. So I'll show you uh, the basics. To do that, you need to go to the options. So press that, it will start blinking and go to the option saying level zero, which is here. When you see that, hold your wheel because when you press this button, it will lose its balance. So we pressed it and as you can see, I can tilt uh, the wheel uh, forward and back and it's not balanced. So we need to press it again. But before that, you need to make sure that it's upright. And it balanced it itself and now everything is working properly. So let's wrap it up. The Lynx is a wheel of 2024. Even with the Sherman L, Blitz from Bigoti and F22 from King Song. It is still the wheel that not only performs better than others, but can do more than others, being safer than others. And it's a big deal. You can literally use it as a commuter, off-road, wheel, mountain climber, long ranger, you name it. The wheel's weight make it more versatile and its use cases more flexible. It handles well and can tackle pretty much any terrain that you throw at it. The suspension is top notch and the battery life is solid and the overall quality is impressive. This wheel is really really great. Don't get me wrong, it's not perfect. It could be better and the Sherman L that is being produced right now is basically the Lynx with a lot of fixes in it. In fact it is more Lynx than the Sherman itself, but it wouldn't exist without the Lynx. And while I'm finishing editing this video, I already can compare the Veteran Sherman L and the Lynx because the Veteran Sherman L is parked in my garage downstairs and the Lynx, well, I'm still waiting for the Lynx, but I've been riding it a lot and I can compare this Lynx. And you might ask, which one is better? Well, the Sherman L is basically an upgraded Lynx. It is more stable, it has more battery, meaning more range, but it is a little bit heavier, so it means it's a little bit worse for trails. So yes, the Lynx is slightly better for trails, but for everything else, the Sherman L is probably a better wheel. But is it that different from the Lynx? I don't know. Probably I need to make another review. What do you think? So who is this wheel for? If you are an experienced rider looking for a wheel that can handle casual commuting and off-roading with equal ease, the Lynx is a hard to beat. It's also great for heavier riders like myself who need that extra power, especially torque and stability, especially when you are dragging your fat ass somewhere uphill. It rides differently from bigger wheels like the V13 or the Master Pro, but I like how it handles and how it's stable it is at speed. Is it good for beginners? Well, maybe not. The power and the speed of this thing can be overwhelming if you are just starting out, and it's simply unsafe. Don't buy a Lamborghini as your first car. And if you are on a tight budget, there are cheaper options out there that can be better for you. Is it worth the money? In my opinion, yes. You are getting a lot of will for that, but only if you are going to use all that it offers. If you are just looking for a simple commuter, this might be an overkill, but an almost ideal overkill. 
I'm thinking that the Sherman L will be an even more ideal overkill. Anyway, that's it for the review. And if you are still here, congratulations. You are freaking awesome. Okay, ride safe. And as usual, thank you for your time. Don't let anybody die down there. Oh, freaking hell. Give me a call, Leo. Guess what? We got your unicycle.